Hello everybody, um, my name is Deirdre Moynihan, I'm the Head of Programs at Music Network and I'm really looking forward to telling you about this uh, exciting new award, uh, the Music Capital Scheme Award 4. You're very welcome to this information session. Uh, the format, just so you know, is I'm going to talk about the award, the application process, the asses assessment process for the next maybe 15 to 20 minutes or so. And there'll be an opportunity to answer questions at the end. Um, if you'd like to pop any questions into the Q&A as we go along, I'll see them all at the end and uh, answer anything I haven't covered in the session so far. Uh, just to let you know, the session is being recorded. So um, you may have people you know who would be interested in this award. Uh, you can let them know that they can view this session on our um, social media channels over the coming days. It'll be uploaded in the next day or two, so you might share that information around. And then just to say that I will be, I suppose, closely following the guidelines as I talk through uh, the award. So you might like to download those now. Um, my colleague Jess is going to pop a link into the chat and uh, you can download them now if you haven't already done so from our website. Uh, so I'm just going to get started here. I'm going to share my screen, if you just bear with me one minute. And hopefully everyone can see that. So as I said, you're very welcome to the Music Capital Scheme 2024 Award for Online Information Session. Let me just click here so I can continue. So the Music Capital Scheme is managed by Music Network and it's funded by the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltoch, Sport and Media. So first of all, essentially, what is Music Capital Scheme Award for? So it's a brand new award, which we're very excited uh, to present in 2024. And essentially the scheme makes high quality string instruments available on loan from the Music Network National Instrument Collection. And who is it aimed at? So it is for high level classical string players who are beginning or in the early stages of a professional performance career. And for those who are demonstrating exceptional potential and have a strong track record as a solo performer and or within a chamber music setting. Now, who can apply? So it's for, as I said, individual classical violinists, violists, and cellists, and you must be aged 18 or over. You must be an Irish citizen or resident in the Republic of Ireland. And just to say, if you are an Irish citizen, you do not necessarily need to be living in Ireland in order to apply to this award. You also must either be in the final year of an undergraduate or postgraduate degree and about to embark on a professional performance career or have completed your third or fourth level education within the last three years. Music Network, of course, is committed to equity and inclusion and welcomes applications from individuals with culturally diverse communities and from people with disabilities. And we encourage uh, those with access or support requirements who wish to submit an application to make contact with us as early as possible before the deadline so that we can make every effort to provide reasonable accommodation. So how does one apply for this award? It's a two-stage process. Uh, the first is an online application process and uh, you can visit musicnetwork.ie and you will be able to browse to the what's on section of our uh, website. And there you will find a link to the Music Capital Scheme. Now you're going to see this uh, deadline date uh, quite a few times uh, throughout this application, or sorry, this uh, information session. You must submit your online application by 2 p.m. on Wednesday, the 30th of October. We can't as you can appreciate, accept late applications. So those that are successful and invited to uh, proceed to stage two uh, will be invited to partake in an online interview and also an in-person audition. So just to say that 
applications will be ineligible should they be received after the deadline. And as I mentioned, I'll be mentioning that quite a few times. So just make sure to submit well in advance of the deadline so that you don't have any you know, technical issues that um, you know, might cause a problem for you if you wait until the day itself. Um, if you're missing any requested information, so the, the information that's going to be requested um, on the online form or the support materials that you're asked to upload via the online form, you must uh, submit all of that information and all of those support materials. And finally, uh, if uh, your application does not comply with the award conditions, um, it would be deemed ineligible. So uh, just to briefly speak about the Music Network National Instrument Collection, so a newly launched collection. Um, it currently comprises uh, five string instruments. And I'm just going to briefly go through those with you just to show you what um, uh, is to be applied for uh, via award four. So there are five instruments, three violins, a viola and a cello. So the first of these is um, an 1880 Gand and Bernardel violin. I'm not going to go through all of the information you see on the right hand side here. I'm just going to list the instruments because all of this information is available in an appendix to the guidelines, which you can download from our website or you may have done so already via the chat. Uh, the second violin we have is a Stefan von Baer, 2007, a contemporary instrument. And we have an instrument, beautiful uh, instrument by Alexandre Valois, which was just completed in 2024. A Charles John Wilkinson, 1930 viola. And finally, the O'Neill cello and bow, which um, includes a Connor Russell cello made in 2015 and a Robert Pierce bow made in 2016. And as you'll see, the cello is the only instrument that will be loaned with a bow. So for those who are awarded a loan of um, one of the three violins or the viola, they will be offered the opportunity uh, to avail of a contribution of up to 5,000 euro uh, towards the purchase of a new bow. Should they wish to avail of this, uh, they will own and retain that bow at the end of the loan period. So let's look at the application process. As I mentioned, it's a two-stage uh, process. Uh, so just to briefly explain the, the procedure. So if you visit the Music Network website, as I said, log on and visit what's on, you'll see the link to the Music Capital Scheme. From there, you can download the guidelines, which also contains the appendix with information about the instruments. It's very simple to create an account on the application portal uh, from there's a link there on the website to that. And once you're set up on the portal, it's very simple to fill in your application form in stages. So you can um, save a draft of the form as many times as you like and go back so uh, and um, complete it as you have the content prepared. So it's a good idea to log on first, have a look through the whole form, maybe put in your applicant your contact details or something simple like that and save a draft and at least then you know exactly what is required and it's also through the form that you will upload a number of support materials and I'll talk a bit more about those in a minute. Again the application deadline 2 p.m on the 30th of October. Now once you are completely happy with your application and you click the apply now or the submit button and um, you should immediately or within a minute or two receive an automated confirmation email from Music Network. So if that doesn't arrive in your inbox, do check the spam folder. And if you don't have an email there, it means that we haven't for some reason uh, received the submission. So in the event of that happening, get in touch with Music Network straight away and we will um, do our best to see what the issue is. You know, maybe your connection went down when you tried to submit, but we'll make sure to help um, uh, ensure we receive your application safely. So then the results of stage one, all applicants will be notified of stage one results by the 21st of November. And you can request uh, feedback on these results within six weeks of this notification. So 
moving on to stage two, so those applicants that are shortlisted to move on to stage two, they'll be invited to attend an online interview uh, during the week of the 25th of November. Uh, the time and exact date will be confirmed. And this will be followed by an in-person audition on Thursday, the 5th of December. So the auditions will take place in Dublin, in the recital hall of TU Dublin, Grange Gorman campus. You'll be asked to perform a 20 minute program performing repertoire of your own choice. And should you require an accompanist, um, one can be made available. And uh, you can, of course, engage your own accompanist if you prefer, but should you require an accompanist, you will be allocated a rehearsal time of one hour on the day before the auditions. So just to briefly look at the application form then, it's very straightforward. There are five sections. The first of these, section one, relates to the contact details. So very simple, needs no further explanation. Section two is where you um, indicate the instrument you wish to apply for, whether that's a violin, viola, or cello. And you are asked to describe, you know, or share some details about the current instrument you perform on. And you also will be sharing some information about your career details. And I'll cover that section and section three in more detail in a minute. Um, so section three is where you're asked to upload your support materials. Section four, very short section. It's a declaration section. So it's a simple list of uh, check boxes where you confirm uh, for example, that you're over 18, that you are either a resident of Ireland or you're an Irish citizen and so on. And then section five is an optional section and any information that you may enter into section five will have no bearing whatsoever on the application or the assessment of your application. So it's an opportunity for you to share some feedback with the Music Network or the department about the award and, and to, if you choose to do so, help us with some research. And then when you're entirely happy with the application, so you've saved as many drafts as you like, but when you're completely happy with it, you can uh, click apply and your application is submitted. But just to say, of course, nothing can be changed after you click apply. So make sure you're happy with that final draft. So what information will you be asked to provide in section two and section three? So section two, you're asked to provide a description of the instrument you currently play, which if you, you know, that you might describe the instrument, but also you might um, outline, for example, that if, are you, have you outgrown that instrument? You know, is it, does it no longer meet your needs? Is it an instrument that you currently have on loan from the institution where you are studying and you might have to give it back at the end of the, the year? So, you know, the information like that would be relevant to share there. You'll also be asked to share details of your performance experience and your career path to date. Now, that may include experience in a non-professional and a professional environment. You'll be asked to share details of upcoming performances and future career plans, and also details of how, at this point in your career, having access to a new instrument will support your career development. So that's a real opportunity to make a compelling case as to why you need um, an instrument or why you would like to avail of a loan of an instrument from the collection. In section three, this is where you'll be asked to upload files. And three, three uploads are required here. So the first is your CV, your curriculum vitae, and of course that would include the usual information like background on your, your training or your education, um, performance experience. And that would be a max of two pages is what you're asked to submit there. You're asked to submit samples of your performances. So three recordings, at least one of which must be a video. So you can submit two audio, but one must be a video, or it could be three videos. That's entirely up to you, but one must be a video and one must feature unaccompanied playing. And finally, the third upload, you're asked to upload two letters of recommendation from former or current teachers or mentors. So, you know, really um, when you're thinking about who to approach, think about who would be best placed 
to support your application and to talk about you know, your exceptional potential or your strong track record, for example. And you must give uh, the contact details with permission for these referees to be contacted. So the application form, this is just to give you an example of the way in which you will be entering information into the application form. For example, there 2.1, you see an example of how you will select you know, which type of instrument you're applying for, so simple radio buttons. 2.1.1 comes up uh, if you select um, option one or two, either viola or violin in the previous question. And you indicate there whether you would like to avail of a contribution of up to 5,000 towards the cost of a new bow. You don't have to have sourced a bow or anything like that at that stage. It's just an indication as to whether you would like to avail of this opportunity. Section 2.2, as you can see, that's a simple text box. And there will be um, word count limits um, at the bottom right hand corner of all of the text boxes. So keep an eye on them. And then this is just an example of how you'll be uploading files through the form. So here you can see 3.2. This is where you'll upload the samples of your performances, uploading three recordings. So you can see there you'll be just selecting a button called Choose File, and you can browse to where the files are located on your laptop, for example. Now, beneath the question here, you see there's a lot of text. And you'll see this in relation to a number of the questions throughout the form and would encourage you to read this carefully underneath any of the questions because it very often contains very helpful tips, useful information, things that will be helpful to know. For example, you see here, you're told you can upload up to four files. So that would be three recordings plus a Word doc or PDF where you share information about the recordings. It tells you the acceptable file types. You can see there, you can upload an MP3 or a .mp4, for example. Um, and then the note about the recordings, these are the tips I'm mentioning that can be helpful just as a reminder. So this here, you know, you're reminded that you should submit you know, contrasting recordings, recent recordings that offer the best representation of your performance abilities. And that's a really crucial piece of information to keep in mind because this will be the only opportunity that the assessors have to listen to your performances. Even if you have other files online on YouTube or anything like that, the assessors will only be listening to the samples that you upload. And in the Word doc, make sure to include the relevant information um, that, uh, about each recording you know, naturally date and location, the repertoire details, who's, who the performers are, if you're performing with someone else. And just to say that you don't necessarily have to upload an entire sonata or an entire concerto. You know, you can upload part of a movement of something, for example, a short excerpt of two minutes. I mean, whatever you prefer. But if you're uploading a longer file and you want the assessors to listen to a specific uh, section of it, do put in the start and stop times of the relevant section to listen to. That will be really crucial um, for the assessors to kind of get to where you want them to listen to. And uh, finally, the last thing just to say there, if you prefer not to upload um, audio recordings or videos, you can, of course, upload links to audio recordings and videos. And you put these links into a PDF or Word document. And, um, excuse me, uh, at that point, uh, just be sure that the files that you share the links to, that they're fully accessible online. And what I mean by that is sometimes, you know, it might be a SoundCloud link and they might be password protected, or it could be a, a, a YouTube file that isn't publicly available. And so if you need to share access details, make sure to do so, as otherwise, again, the assessors won't have an opportunity to listen to what I'm sure will be a fabulous representation of your performances. And then just the last thing I want to show you at the end here is the save draft and apply button. And that's located at the very end of the application form. And you can scroll down there at any time and just save a draft. As you can see there, it'll tell you when the last draft was saved, when you're entirely happy with your application form, that's the point at which you can click apply. 
Now let's look briefly at the assessment procedure and in particular at the selection criteria because the selection criteria are the basis on which the assessors will assess each application. So they're really important to keep in mind when you are putting together the content of your application. So the first uh, criterion, track record and demonstrated potential in music performance. And as I mentioned, performances in both non-professional, so that might be student, academic, other such environments, and professional environments will be taken into account. So do make sure to list kind of the full uh, breadth of your experience. Uh, there will be 20% related to the impact receiving an instrument from the collection would have on your career plans. Again, this is, you know, really think how you can make a compelling case and why you need an instrument. And also in the next point, demonstrated need for an instrument loan. It could be that, as I said, you have to give an instrument back that is currently on loan from an institution where you're studying. It might be that you've outgrown your current instrument and it's holding you back, for example, you know, it, it's not up to where you need it to be technically, for example. And then finally, evidence of ability to secure Irish and or international professional performance opportunities during the loan period. This may be an invitation from a festival to perform, for example, or it might be that you have already performed at a particular music series and they intend to invite you back. You know, they've confirmed performances in the diary. So there are a number of ways in which you can demonstrate evidence of ability to secure um, these opportunities during the loan period. And now finally, we come to the conditions of the award. And there are a number of conditions, so I'll just go through them quickly. These are all listed at the, the back, the final page of the guidelines. So all awardees, if you're awarded the loan of an instrument, all awardees agree to the following. To maintain Irish citizenship or residency status for the loan period, unless Music Network agrees otherwise. So this would mean that in exceptional cases, when it is very clear that the loan of the instrument would benefit the arts in Ireland, uh, there may be an exception made to this, but you would have to very clearly demonstrate and strongly demonstrate uh, in your application, this would be the case. Awardees would also agree to perform in one concert in Ireland for Music Network during the loan period. And they would also endeavor to perform in Ireland regularly during the loan period. You'll be asked to enter into a license agreement with Music Network concern concerning the housing, insurance, care, inspection, maintenance and repair of the instrument and there will be a nominal fee it will be a small fee but a nominal cost that you'll be asked to pay relating to uh, contribution towards insurance and or administration costs now this next point relates to violin and viola awardees only so should you decide that you would like to avail of uh, the opportunity to have a financial contribution of up to 5,000 towards the purchase of a new bow, you will be at that point asked to submit two quotations from separate makers or suppliers. Um, this is to demonstrate uh, value for money and to show that the research has been done and uh, you can indicate which bow is your preference, of course. Now, all awardees will provide annual reports to Music Network on the use of the instrument for the duration of the loan period. This will be a simple template which you will be asked to fill out once a year dur during the three year period. You will acknowledge or be asked to acknowledge the support of Music Network and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, Sport and Media in biographical material during the loan period. This would be in the form of logos and a text acknowledgement. And then the final two conditions, you would be asked to notify Music Network immediately if you no longer intended to play the awarded instrument for publicly for any reason during the loan period. And in this instance, the instrument would be returned to Music Network. And self-explanatory really, um, all awardees would be bound and agree to abide by the conditions of the award in the case of an unforeseen change in circumstance um, leading uh, to an inability to abide by the conditions of the award, you would be asked to return the instrument immediately to Music Network. 
Um, now, just before we move on from the conditions, there was one thing I meant to mention earlier in relation to auditionees. So if you're invited to audition in Dublin, um, a small uh, fund has been set aside to make a contribution towards the travel costs of those traveling to Dublin. And uh, the amount will be decided depending on the number of shortlisted applicants and where people are coming from. But I just wanted to mention that there would be some contribution to travel costs for people traveling to Dublin to audition in December. Now, just some tips for applicants. They may seem uh, quite obvious, uh, but no harm to remind people just to take care to read the guidelines carefully and um, just to make sure you fully understand the application process and all of that. To read the notes on the application form, that was the text I, I highlighted there underneath um, where you were uploading files, for example. They can be really useful, very helpful. Um, information in your application, keep it clear, concise and relevant, you know, compelling and, and, and straightforward. Ensure the audio video submissions offer the best representation of your playing. We mentioned that earlier. Again, this is the only opportunity uh, the assessors will have to hear your work. So make sure to put your best foot forward to do your playing justice. And do not assume assessors are familiar with your work, even if you, you know, are well known in your field. Um, again, the assessors will only be assessing what is submitted in the application. And an important one, get in touch with Music Network if you have any questions at all at any stage between now and the 30th of October. Um, here are the contact details. So you can contact us uh, on operations at musicnetwork.ie or you can phone us on 0353-1475-0224. So do please get in touch with us at any stage. However, if you have questions right now, you can type them into the Q&A and I will answer them uh, once we, I stop uh, screen sharing. Um, again, the final reminder, has to, can't, can't uh, be a bad thing to say it one more time, submit well in advance of the deadline, which is 2 p.m. on Wednesday, the 30th of October. And you have the link again there as to where you can access the online form. So, I hope I've shared uh, relevant information which will help you when you're uh, looking at putting together your application. Uh, I'm going to stop uh, sharing my screen now. And if you have any questions, I will see them in the Q&A or you might like to type them now. Just bear with me one second. Okay. Do the conditions allow for international travel? Now, I'm not sure if you mean to travel from abroad to the audition, uh, which is absolutely uh, fine. And as I said, there will be a small contribution made uh, to support the travel costs of those traveling to Ireland for the audition. Um, if that isn't the question, please feel free to, to type um, to provide further guidance on the, the query there. or. If you prefer, you can give us a call or send an email if you'd like uh, more clarification. So I'm not sure we have any other questions. I'll just wait uh, for a short period just to see in case anyone else wants to. Okay, apologies. If one was successful and received an instrument, um, I, do you mean to, to travel abroad internationally to play the instrument? Absolutely. Um, there's no restriction on that you would only play the instrument in Ireland. Um, it would be, yes, okay. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. Um, you know, it is about furthering your career internationally and in Ireland. And so uh, would be delighted for uh, the awardees to be performing both at home and abroad. I take it that there is no way to apply for just a bow. So that would relate to our, if you wanted to apply for support uh, to purchase a bow, you could apply to our award two or three of the Music Capital Scheme, depending on whether you're an established or an emerging musician. And uh, that 
um, process has completed for this year. Uh, it opened earlier in the summer and the awards are actually just about to be announced for award two and three. But do keep an eye on you know, uh, the opportunity we hope will be offered out again next year. So if you sign up to the Music Network newsletter, uh, you certainly won't miss that opportunity because all of those opportunities will be included in the newsletter and um, you can uh, apply for a bow then, um, well, for support to purchase a bow, uh, the support level would be 50% of the cost of an instrument or a bow. So that scheme would be more suited if you are just looking for a bow. So I think we may be at the end of the questions or maybe there's one, might be something if I scroll down. Okay. okay, well, look, I think we might leave it there. I don't see any other questions coming up, but of course, more questions might come to mind as you start looking closely at the form and preparing the content of your application. So as I said, do feel free to get in touch with Music Network at any point you have the email address and the phone number in the in the uh, slides there. And uh, we'll be delighted to do our best to help answer any queries you may have. So I think at this point, it's just for me to say, you know, thank you for tuning in. And I hope you found this helpful. And we look forward to receiving your application and wish you the best of luck with your application. Thanks again. <laughs>